I don't know about you, but something strange happens to my brain when I confront a product that's been condensed. Witness the recurring phenomenon of the mini phone, the mini Cooper. The mini Winnie. And that makes sense. Things that seem smaller than they should be tickle the same parts of our brains that help us believe that pile of circuits is actually our new robot friend. And also the aspirational parts of our brains that generations of advertisers long ago learned to leverage. Just think of all the things I could do with a tablet this tiny. That journal I've been putting off. The moleskin replacement that'll finally get my studies on track. That nascent cooking interest that was just waiting for the right digital cookbook. My new life is just a $500 credit card charge away. The new iPad mini will not do these things for you. As my friend David Amell said of a different gadget, things don't really make you happy. But if you have any of those impulses already within you, if you have no space in your pocket for a supersized smartphone and no space in your life for a full-size tablet, well, I'll put it to you this way. There's only one reason I wouldn't buy the iPad mini personally, and that reason probably won't apply to you. Well, I already gave you the conclusion early, so why not complete the formatted version by talking price? This is not a cheap tablet, especially the way I've configured mine. Apple is happy to point out that the iPad mini starts at $499, but 64 gigs? No thanks. Wi-Fi only? No. This thing was meant to be used on the go, and the phone I carry alongside it doesn't exactly pack the battery to be a long-lasting mobile hotspot. So those storage and cellular upgrades add cost, and while I guess you don't really need the Apple Pencil 2 or Smart Folio cover, they add so much to the experience. When it's not protecting the screen, the folio doubles as a stand to prop the iPad up, and when you do that, the pencil serves as a surrogate mouse, so you're not always gorilla arming your way through the interface. Yes, you can use an actual mouse if you like, but it's as unfinished an experience on iOS as it is on Android. The pencil packs the same precision writing and doodling as ever, with clever shortcuts hidden in the corners of the display, by default a memo pad and a screenshot function. The only thing missing is the magic keyboard that Apple offers for its larger iPads. In its absence, you're stuck with Bluetooth options like this one, which is actually pretty good for a $40 Amazon special, but it's still a Bluetooth keyboard, so the double keystroke problem will definitely get it on your nerves. You've heard me complain about this issue on everything from Lenovo's X1 Fold to Microsoft's Surface Duo to Samsung's Galaxy Fold. This just seems to happen with Bluetooth keyboards. Oh, that is, unless you're my friend Jaime Rivera, who's so convinced his 20-year-old Palm Igo is the ultimate typing accessory that he bought, like, three or four of them. More power to you, Jaime. Anyway, the iPad mini's design doesn't need accessories to prop it up. This is a great tablet. Ditching Face ID for a fingerprint sensor is exactly what I hoped Apple would do for this generation of iPhones. That scanner shares space with the power button and works well, if a bit slowly. Nearby sit the two volume keys in a new spot that takes some getting used to, but relocating them was necessary to give the Apple Pencil a place to dock magnetically and charge while doing so. The display bezels are just big enough to help you hold the thing, their symmetry and pleasantly rounded corners a big aesthetic improvement over prior iPads mini. For the casing, you've got your choice of four colors, and if you're like me, and the purple color you ordered doesn't match up to your lavender phone quite as well as you'd like, visit my sponsor dbrand for the easiest color correction you can conceive of. Or take up the texture a notch with my perennial favorites, the Swarm and Matrix Honeycomb skins that are as easy to apply as they are to grab hold of. dbrand your iPad mini, or whatever mobile device you need to spice up, at the link in the description. Back in the front of the device, the 8.3-inch display is, yeah, well, it's, it's fine. The color contrast and crispness are in line with what Apple has delivered in the past, but the lack of ProMotion, I'll admit it, came as a surprise to me. 
If you're coming from a faster screen, like you'll find on the new iPhone or most high-end Androids, the cut rate frame rate does feel a bit jankier. And while I haven't noticed the so-called jelly scrolling issue at all, I guess it's worth mentioning for those who can pick up on those things. What bothers me a bit more is the 500 nit max brightness, which again is fine, but only if you don't plan to use this thing much outdoors in direct sunlight, a limitation that conflicts with its mobile first appeal. Of course, if Apple had made the screen brighter or faster, it might have impacted the battery life, which as it stands is also just okay. For the past two weeks, I've used the iPad mini mainly on the go from coffee shops to watering holes that don't frown too harshly on work-obsessed barflies. With my usual workflow of writing in Google Docs, doing the associated research in Safari and Chrome, and taking the occasional break for a Kindle ebook or Spotify session for a total usage of four to five hours per day, I've come to expect two days from the iPad mini between charges. Those top-ups take place via the standard USB Type-C connector Apple refuses to carry over to its iPhone, and the company even includes a 20-watt brick in the box. Huzzah! On the flip side, though, the charging speed is quite slow, taking two hours to get from empty to full, and even longer if you use another charger. When it comes to performance, I didn't expect any problems, and I didn't find any either. The tablet has no trouble running simultaneous side-by-side -side apps, and iOS has gotten so polished that hopping into and out of that multitasking experience is about as intuitive as it gets. For my workday, I love focus mode. For years, I've been asking for a kind of cross-app away message, a quick and easy way of suppressing the flow-destroying pop-ups we're all so familiar with. And while the quad speakers are nowhere near as bassy as on larger iPads, they were at least loud enough to serve as an impromptu hotel room boombox during the iPhone 13 road trip review. And while I've already shown you some samples from this front-facing selfie camera on the iPad, the fact that it's wide angle is not the only awesome thing about it. Center stage, which is an auto crop feature that appears to make the camera follow you on FaceTime calls is, uh, unexpectedly delightful. It's, it's a really smart feature, and I hope more tablets, well, more devices start using it. And finally, the home screen, that perennial pain point of all my iOS reviews of the past 10 years. <laughs> There's still some stuff I don't like. Moving icons around is still much harder than it should be, and I don't know why there's so much wasted space here. But Apple's widgets have matured to the point that I can get a quick overview of news, weather, my next appointment, and a reminder of which Kindle book is serving as the carrot at the end of my workday without ever opening a single app. While there are always features I'd like to see, such as a glimpse of notifications when opening the folio flap, similar to the promised but never delivered peak feature on the Surface Duo, on the whole, Apple's interface works very well at this display size. In fact, after over a year on the much too big 13-inch iPad Pro, a tablet I really grew to hate for its gargantuan dimensions, the Mini is a profound relief. I'd go so far as to say it's my favorite screen size for iOS. So with all these thumbs ups, pluses, and check marks, why won't the iPad Mini make it into my everyday carry? Well, simply because I already have something that gets close to this screen size, delivers similar functionality, and when I'm done, folds up into a device that doubles as my phone and fits in my pocket. Longtime viewers already know all the reasons I'm hooked on the Samsung Galaxy Z Fold 3, and I'll leave a link to my review if you're a newcomer who'd like to see that. But folks, that's me, and the Fold is an $1,800 phone. If you're an iPhone user who wants a bigger screen for certain occasions without getting absurd about things, and you don't need as much storage or as many connectivity options as I do, you could pay about the same amount of money for one of these and a new iPhone. If you do, and your workflow and your prioritization of portability is anything like mine, I'm confident your appreciation for the iPad mini will grow to be anything but mini. 
This review was produced following two weeks with an iPad mini retail unit purchased by Mr. Mobile. Neither Apple nor any other manufacturer was given copy approval rights, editorial input, or an early preview of this content. That means they're seeing it for the first time right alongside you. Be sure to check out that road trip review I mentioned to watch a pretty fun excursion to Boston through the lenses of the iPhone 13 Pro. And if you like these kind of videos, please subscribe to The Mr. Mobile on YouTube. Until next time, thanks for watching and stay mobile, my friends.